So in today's talk, what I want to talk about is, uh, Pai Sabji quite kindly gave me an introduction um, about the Mool Mantar Katha. I just want to talk about a very simple concept, but yet it's probably the most deepest concept that we have, and that is the idea of Ik. Gurbani starts with Ik, Ikonkar. And most of the time when you read Guru Granth Sahib Ji, we skip over anywhere where it says Ikonkar, even if it's in the beginning of a Shabad, if it's the start of a new rag or a new author within Guru Granth Sahib Ji, we just read the name of the rag, Bani of this Bhagat of this Guru, Ikonkar, Satgur Prasad, and then we just carry on. But the Ikonkar is the most important message. So, Today I want to just have a discussion around what do we mean by this. When we look at the translations, Ikonkar is always translated the same way. There is one God. And the thing about there is one God is that there are so many problems inherent with that one simple translation. That translation is so flawed that if we then go ahead with that translation, our understanding of the rest of Guru Granth Sahib Ji is also flawed because we haven't understood what Ik means. So what do we mean by God? What is the meaning of God? Every day we wake up and we might do some Bani, we might do some part, we come to the Gurdwara, and it's all centered around this idea of God. But whoever stops to think, what is God? Most of us have a vision of a very old man sitting with a white beard, floating in the clouds somewhere. And we think that is God. But maybe Guru Granth Sahib Ji is giving us a different meaning of what is God. And hopefully, as we go on today, we can start looking at what some of those things are. So it's really important in the beginning, before you start praying to God, before you start dedicating your life to God, before you say that this is what my life is going to be about, let's just talk about what is God? Who are you going to dedicate your whole life to? We say that our life is about finding God. We say our life is about becoming one with God. But nobody actually says, hang on a minute, what is God? What, what are we trying to get one to? Where is God? So it's really important that we look at the Gurmat definition of God, not that we borrow the definition of God from somewhere else. Even the word God, let's think about the word God, what do we mean? When you think about God and the word God, it has a lot of human characteristics attached to it. When we think about God, what do we generally think? We think of a masculine figure, something that's a bit more male than a bit more female. God comes across as this he. So because we think of God in a masculine way, notice all the translations of Guru Granth Sahib Ji talk about he is true. He has no fear. He has no hate. Because we've translated God as a masculine figure. So that's one thing that we do with God. Then the other thing that we do with God is we put God somewhere over there, somewhere far away. Yeah, But then because we know that that's not always true, we say, oh yeah, but he's inside us as well. Where is he inside us? I don't know. He's somewhere inside us. So this idea of God, if we don't explore it, then we really have to ask ourselves the question, what are we doing? Who are we going towards? Who are we praying to? What is the purpose of us being a Sikh? What does the Guru say? What's the Guru trying to talk to us about? We have to think about this idea of what God is. So Ikwankar means a lot more than there is one God. In fact, there is one God doesn't even begin to describe what Ikwankar is trying to describe. Ik, quite obviously, is a number. What does the number one mean? Let's forget about the idea of God for a moment. What does one mean? What, how do we contextualize that? How do we think about that? 
Think about Guru Granth Sahib Ji, you open Guru Granth Sahib Ji and the first word is a number and the number is one. Let's just stop and think, what is one? One what? One where? What are we talking about? In its simplest form, you can say that one does not equal two. Everybody agree with that? One doesn't equal two. So if Guru Granth Sahib Ji is saying that there is one thing here, what Guru Granth Sahib Ji is saying is, is the opposite of duality. Duality means that you see everything in twos. I'm here and you're there, left and right, up and down. Everything is good and bad. Everything is in opposites. That's called duality. Dubida, Duja Pao, Gurbani talks about these things. Guru Sahib starts by saying, duality doesn't exist. There's only ik. So if we say that there is only one, the first thing that we can say if there isn't two, then straight away we have to say that there aren't two things that are here. In this journey of Sikhi, how do we generally talk about Sikhi? We say, I am trying to find God. Tikani? I'm trying to find God. I and God. So straight away, in our Sikhi journey, the very first step that we take, we've taken the wrong step. I am trying to find God. Guru Sahib says no. Think about Ikkonkar, think about Ik, like Guru Nanak Dev Ji giving you the answer. You know when we were young, we used to have mathematics textbooks. And you'd have all the questions in the front, and in the, in the back you'd have all the answers. Did you ever have that? You have to look quickly at the back and you'll see what the answers are. It doesn't tell you how to work it out, but it just gives you the answer there. Now Guru Nanak Dev Ji has done something the same, except he doesn't give the answer at the end. Guru Nanak Dev Ji gives you the answer right at the beginning. Then Guruji spends the rest of the time trying to explain to you how did I get to that answer. You know when you're doing mathematics and you do a, a, a problem? The teacher doesn't just want to see the answer. The teacher wants to say, how did you get to that answer? What, what did you add? What did you take away? Guru Nanak Dev Ji has done something similar. Open Guru Granth Sahib Ji, it starts, the answer is one. Now I'm going to spend the rest of Guru Granth Sahib Ji trying to explain to you what this one means. So the answer is one. So the question is, how are you going to find God? What's inherently flawed in that statement is that I am here and God is somewhere else. So straight away, we've got the wrong answer. We've got two. And Guru says, no, 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 don't. you can't say two because the answer is always one. So if you've got me and you've got God, how do you get one? Okay, let's, let's put it another way. What we're trying to do in a mathematical formula is the answer equals God, yeah? And the question is, me plus God equals God. Let's just think about that. Or even simpler. A plus B equals B. What does A equal? If B is 1, A plus B equals B. What does A have to be? 0. zero. A has to be zero. If me plus God equals God, what does me have to be? Zero. To begin with, the first step of Sikhi, to find God, you have to drop me. Me plus God. If you're saying, I'm trying to find God, and the answer equals God, then this question isn't, now how am I going to find God? The question isn't, what, am I, what do I have to do to find God? The question is, how do I make me equal zero? How do I get rid of me? When I get rid of me, the answer is God. When I get rid of me, the answer is God. That's what ik means. That's the opening statement. That you are not here. Or if you are here, you need to move out the way. If you're here and you're trying to find God, then you're the problem. If you plus God equals God, then you is the problem. That's the thing that we... God isn't the problem. 
God isn't the thing that's far away that you have to try and get to. How many times do we talk about Sikhi being like a journey? I'm on a journey and at some point at the end of the journey, I'm going to find God. But if you understand what Ik means, if you understand this very simple mathematics, then you have to understand that the journey doesn't involve me going on a long journey. The journey involves taking a rubber and rubbing me out. When you rub me out, then you get God equals God. There's no me left. That's what ik means. Now it's all well and good me sitting on stage and saying this is what God means, this is what ik means. But you're all much cleverer than me and you'll ask a very important question. You say, hang on a minute, does Gurbani support what you're saying? No point me talking, let's listen to whether Guru supports this argument. Does Guru talk like this? Because so far we don't really hear Guru talking like this. That's because Guru is talking like this all the time, but we haven't understood Guru talking like this. We're thinking Guru is talking about me and Guru is talking about God, duality. So I'll give you a couple of lines from Guru Granth Sahib Ji, just to get the conversation going, because a lot of us, fair enough, we don't want to believe anyone. We only have put our parosa in the Guru. So we need to know, does the Guru support this argument? Guru Nanak Dev Ji says in Ang 878, Sagar meh boond, boond meh sagar, bid Sagar meh boond. Boond na matlab hunda, a drop. Sagar hunda, ocean. The ocean is in the drop. And the drop is in the ocean. Very few people understand this. Who understands this? Have you heard this analogy before? Have people talked to you about this analogy before? Sikhi is like a drop of water trying to get back to the ocean. Kadisunya? Sikhi is like a drop of water getting back to the ocean. Sikhi has been taken, you've been taken out of the ocean and you're trying to find your way back. <coughs> but that's not what the Guru is saying. That's not Gurmat. Sikhi is not that you are taken out of the ocean and you're trying to find your way back in the ocean. Sikhi says you are a drop of ocean, you're a drop of water and you've never left the ocean. You are a drop of water in the ocean you just don't know you're in the ocean. Cholo, that can get a little bit confusing. How can I be in the ocean, but I'm not aware that I'm in the ocean? So then Guruji uses <coughs> different ways to, to understand this. Guru Nanak Dev Ji in Ang number 23 also says this, Rang Rata Mera Sahib Rav Rahya Bharpur Rahao. Rangrata Mira Sahib. My master is just filled with love. Love everywhere. Rav Rahaya Bharpur and is everywhere, totally infused in everything. Bharpur means it's completely infused into everything. Rahao. Just wait, just think about this for a moment. Mira Sahib, Rav Rahaya Bharpur is everywhere, in everything right now. You know what that means? Everything that you're looking at right now, all around you, look around the room, everything that you're looking at is God. Everything that you're looking at is God. Yet we come to the Gurdwara every week, every day, for some of us, and we say, I don't know where God is. But we're not listening to what the Guru says. The Guru says, it's everywhere. Jojo dise, so tera roop. Whatever I see, I see you. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji goes on with the Shabad. Rang Rata Mera Sahib Rav Rahya Bharpur Rahao. Ape Machi Machli Ape Pani Jal Ape Jal Manakana Ape Andar Lal. So he uses the analogy of a fisherman trying to catch a fish. He says, This oneness, this ik, he himself is the fisherman and the fish, the water and the net. Think about that as an analogy. There's a man standing there fishing with a net. God is the fisherman, God is the fish, 
God is the pani and God is the net. And yet we spend every day saying, how do I find God? Everywhere. God is everything. Bhagat Nam Dev Ji goes into this in a beautiful way. On <coughs> Ang 485, Bhagat Nam Dev Ji says, Asa Bani Sri Nam Dev Ji ki Ek anek byapak purak jat dekho tat soi Ek and anek This thing that we're talking about, this God, is one but is many at the same time. It is in one form but it's also in many forms. Ek anek byapak purak And it's permeating again. It's again this idea that this Paramatma is infused in everything. Jat dekho tat soi. Wherever I look, I can see it. Maya chitra bachitra bimohit birla bujha koi. Maya has created an image so captivating, so interesting, that very few people can see past it. So what do we see? When we look around, we say, there's that friend, there's the person I met last week, there's a person I don't like, any manu e kya si, any manu o kya si, I don't like him, this person didn't say hello to me last week, this person is my friend, there's my cousin. What we're doing is every single person we're putting a label on. This is my friend, this is not my friend. I like this person, I don't like this person. We put a label on everyone. But what are the Bhagats saying? That the label that you're putting on everyone, you're making everyone into separate things. Now we're not even talking about two, now we're talking about 200. There's one, there's a different one, there's a different one, there's a different one. What are the Bhagats saying? That your labeling system is wrong. Harek bandenu to see duja duja label, different label, duja label, something else. This name is this, this name is that. That's a man, that's a woman. Different, different labels. Ejadi labeling system hai na? E galtia. The way that we're doing the labeling of every single person as something different, that's wrong. What are the Pagats doing? This is God, this is God, this is God. This is God, this is God, this is God, this is God. They're labeling God as everything. What we've done is we've just mislabeled everything. So when we see everything, we say, Oh, that's Gurpreet. Oh, that's Jaspal. Oh, that's Harmit. We give all the different labels. But we never say, This is why Guru, this is why Guru, this is why Guru, this is why Guru. The why Guru may have different forms. Why Guru may have different age, some are old, some are young, some are male, some are female. Some are nice to us, some are not so nice to us, but they're all Why Guru. But we don't label them like that. We label them as individuals. So Bhagat Nam Dev Ji is saying that this is Maya. Maya has created such a fascinating image that I can't see you as the same as that because you look so different. You behave so different. There's a man, there's a woman. How do I see them as the same? So Maya has confused us. And he says very few people can see past that Maya. But then how does Bhagat Nam Dev Ji go? How does he fix this problem? Sab go bind hai, sab go bind hai, go bind bin nahi koi. This is go bind, this is go bind, this is God, this is God, this is God, this is God. Everything is God, everything is God, without God, there is nothing at all. Sab ek man sat sahans jaise ot pot prab soi rahao. As though there is one thread that holds a thousand different beads. This God, this divine is woven into creation. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the Hira. And I think, oh, that's a nice Hira, but that looks different to that one, and that looks different to that one. That bead looks shinier than that bead. This one is bigger, this one is smaller. But what we don't see is that same Taga, that same thread that binds all of us. This is what the Pagats are seeing. They're seeing something behind the Maya. They're seeing past the Maya. And this goes back to the water analogy. You know how I said that Sagar mein boond, boond mein Sagar? Sometimes it can be a bit difficult. How can a drop be in the ocean? How can an ocean be in the drop? It gets confusing maybe. Bhagat Namdev Ji gives a similar analogy. 
But here he talks about Jal Tarang Ar Fain Budh Budar Jal Te Pin Na Hoi. Here he uses the idea of a wave. The waves of water. Now, I was very lucky, the Gursik friends of mine, they took me to South Shields to the seaside today. I come from London, so it takes a very long time for me to just see the coast. So the Gursik friends, they said, Chalo, I just ended the kaye. Oh, we were able to see the ocean today. And Bhagat Namdev Ji gives this analogy of going to the sea, going to the beach. And he says, the waves that I can see, all the foam, all the bubbles that get caused by the waves, they are not distinct from the ocean. So if you want to understand this ik idea, what is God, what is me, how am I connected to God, think about the ocean. And every now and then a wave comes up and the wave goes down again. Just how long does it take? Few seconds, wave comes up and then it's gone again. Those few seconds of the wave coming up is your entire life. You are like a wave. Just for a moment you come out, you see the world and then you're gone again. How long is our life in the grand scheme of things? A blink of an eye. Just like a wave comes up and goes. So, tell me now at what point is the wave different to the ocean? Does the wave ever leave the ocean? No, no. The wave never left the ocean. The wave just comes up for a moment and then the wave gets confused. Where is this ocean that everybody keeps talking about? Imagine one wave goes to another wave and says, I've heard about this ocean thing. Have you heard about it? He said, yeah, I heard about the ocean. I don't know where it is. But everyone says this ocean is very big. Chalo, I don't know. Maybe we'll carry on looking for it. We keep asking everyone else, where's the ocean? Have you seen the ocean? What they don't understand is, they are the ocean. They just can't see it. This comes back to God. Most people do not want to hear this. In fact, people will argue against me when I say this thing. Gurbani is trying to teach you one message. You are God. Just take a moment to think about that. And if you think you're not God, then have a think about the wave analogy. Because Guruji's, time and time again, the Brahmgyanis, the Pagats that have written in Tantan Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, the teachers who we bow down to every day are saying the wave of the ocean is never separated from the water, but you just don't know it yet. You are not separate from God. You never have been separate from God. When did you leave God? You know, the Buddhists talk about a similar analogy. One fish goes up to another fish and says, so where's this water that everyone keeps talking about? And this is what we're like. The fish, they say in, the, in uh, Buddha Dharam, they say the fish cannot understand water. He, doesn't, he can't see it because he's born in water, he lives in water, he eats water, he drinks water, he swims in water. And then he asks his friends, where's the water? How can a fish understand what pani is, what water is? It can't. In the same way, we cannot understand what God is. Like, think how small a fish is, think how big the ocean is. Can the fish comprehend how big the ocean is, where does the ocean start, where does the ocean end, how deep it is, how vast it is. We can't. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Ape jane aap. Don't ask me. I don't know how big it is, but I know where it is. It's here and it's now. And it's in you and it's made of you and you are made of it. You never left it. So what do we need in order to realize this? It's all good talking about the philosophy, Hannah. It's good talking about the theory of it. 
chalo i am god me and god we are all sagar mein bood we all mix together or what do i do what how do i make it real for me and why don't i feel this god guru ji has another lesson to teach us and guru is saying that if you are god and god is you and it's all the same thing there's one reason why you don't know why you're god and that word is homme and in english we can translate that as i am main hai ga main the ha homme is the one barrier to realizing god let's go back to this analogy of imagine you're a drop of water in the ocean imagine you're a drop of water in the ocean but you can't see the ocean so there's this almost this false almost film around it like a barrier around it there's some sort of barrier around the ocean around the drop that's stopping the drop from seeing the ocean but if we think about that again is there any real barrier the ocean is made of lots of drops are there any barriers that stop the the water from being part of the ocean there's no real barrier if you take a drop of water out of the ocean and put it back in can you pick that same drop of water out again you can't because it just merges in next drop that you take out is a different drop it's made of different bits of water and in the same way our homme is an illusion we don't actually have homme but the illusion of homme is there that i am that has to be dropped so i am is now the problem what did we say in the beginning me plus god equals god how do you get to god you have to get rid of the me we're talking about the same thing here this idea i am now think about the statement that we all say in our spiritual path why are you seek i am trying to get to god what does that sentence start with i am what is the barrier to getting to god i am so the very first kadam the first step that you take saying i am trying to find god guru nanak dev ji says stop stop right there because you taken the first step in the wrong direction you said i am trying to find god so the i am is now our barrier to finding god i am is your barrier to finding god now you're getting confused ha huh? i'm the problem all this time i thought god was far away i thought god was something far away and i have to do a whole bunch of things and i have to wake up at the right time and i have to do all these things and then somehow god is just going to drop into my head and i'm going to say oh i got darshan of god and that's what we think keep trying keep trying keep trying and one day like we buy a lottery ticket right you buy a lottery ticket every week and then one day our uh, mere number aagi that's it my turn now so we deal with sikki in that way every day you keep trying and one day your number is going to come oh i found it and if it doesn't come chalo next life try again yeah come back next week or come back in the in the next janam so the very idea that we think we are separate from god is the barrier to getting to god now that questions what am i supposed to do cuz i am here and i don't feel like god now what am i supposed to do what's the next step why don't i feel like god if you're telling me i'm one with god if i am god and god is me why don't i feel it surely i should surely the feeling of god should be a bit better than what i feel like every day every day what do we think about what does our life feel like you wake up in the morning you already stressed you already late for work you say chalo chalo quickly we do our nitne we can you just do it very quickly chalo nitne ho gaya aaj khalsa aaj ji pate chalo let's go to work you put a bit of kirtan in the car but you're not really listening and then you do your hard work you come home chalo reh ra to dar sukro you do all that stuff chalo the whole day is over you go to sleep 
Did you find God? No, not today. I'll try again tomorrow. When's it going to come? Viti saal ho gaye. When's it going to come? Did anybody ever think, you know, I tried this now. It's been a long time. Something should have changed by now. The reality is, most of us have stopped looking for God. Most of us are quite happy just doing our net name in the morning. Like we're earning some credit, brownie points, like we're banking Simran into the bank. Chalo. When I die, then God will see how much Simran I did. And maybe God will reward me. You know, I did a lot of Simran. Come on, give me a break. So what we're doing now is we're saying, oh, I don't know really about God. I'm not really, I'm not really sure if that's really possible. I never even met anyone that met God. We're all just doing the same thing. So we're all just going to do our Nithinim every day. Most of us have stopped looking for God. Yeah? Even when we stand in our Ardas, nobody ever says, God, come on, enough's enough now. Now it's time to meet you. But this is not the language that the Pagats are using. The Pagats are using a different language. Both Janama Bichrethe Madhu. So the Bhagats are saying, God, enough's enough. I've tried everything else. I've wasted lots of lives. This life I'm dedicating to you, but I'm asking you, it's been too long. Chalo, come on now. We don't have that thirst for finding God anymore. We don't have that cha, that itcha anymore. We have the desire to remain in Sikhi. We bow down to our Gurus. We give a lot of respect to our Gurus and Gurbani and all those things. But what Guru is telling you to do, Gobind Milan ki e teri bariya. You have to meet. Avar kaj tere ketana kaam. Nothing else is of any value. You have to meditate and find God. So the question is, why can't I find God? What's happening? What's wrong with me? Do I need to do something more? So first thing we have to understand is this line, I am. If any sentence starts with I am, in your mind or out loud that you say, you have to realize that's the problem. This is why Guru says, don't spend in time doing nindya of other people. You know when we insult other people, what are we doing? We say, he did this, then he said that, then did you hear what he said? You start talking about the bad person. He said, he did this and he did that. But you know secretly what you're saying inside your head? At least I'm not like that. I'm better than that. This is why Guru says, don't do nindya of anyone. Do not do nindya of anyone. Because secretly in your head you're saying, I am better than that person at least. At least I'm not that bad. I am, comes back to I am. I am trying to find God. Guru Nanak says, no, you're not. So what is the solution? We have to realize that there is already God here, right now. Have a think about that. Just for a moment, have a think. Right here in this room is the God that you've been searching for your whole life. Here, now, look around you, this is God. It's already here. Everything that you're looking at right now, everything that you're listening to, everything that your eyes can see, everything that your hands can feel, everything that your nose can smell, that's all God right here. But you're expecting something else, right? You know, go back to this lottery analogy. Going back about 10, 15 years ago, when the national lottery was a really big deal, TV te adverts ande hunde sa. There used to be adverts on the TV and you used to see somebody sitting in their living room watching TV and then a big hand will come. It's you. You remember those adverts? It's your turn. We expect God to do that to us. Because we can't see that this is God. This is not good enough. I know these people. They're not my, they're not my friends, my family. They're not my, they're not my friends. I know them. This is not God. So we're expecting God to be some lightning moment. Like the whole heaven is going to open and a big hand is going to come. Say, Ajaput, come to me. That's what we're expecting. 
Why? Because we think God is sitting up there. He's sitting in the clouds waiting for you. But for some reason, he's not listening. Every day you're doing Nam Daan, yeah? Kes Daan, you're doing all this, Guruji, give me this. Amrit Vela, Jagandhi Baksho, give me all this. You know what we even call God? Upparwala. Can you? Upparwala. Did Guru Granth Sahib ever call God Upparwala? No, Guruji says Andarwala. The one inside you, that's God. But even when we do part, we're looking that way. God, I haven't got too much time, Panjimit. I'll do my Ardas. God, come on, please. And when we're sitting and doing Simran, you know how we do Simran? We sit down. Come on, God. 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 Okay, God, I run out of time. I'll see you next week. That's how we do Simran. You're sitting here and you're calling him like he's going to come and find you and say, oh, I didn't know you were calling me. Oh, uh, sorry, I was busy over there. They, I was helping those people over there. Acha, acha, okay, on teri bari hai, chalo, okay, fine. We're still expecting God to come from the sky. God is not going to come from the sky. God is the sky. God is the ground. Jale hari, thale hari, ure hari, bane hari. Gire Hari, Gufe Hari, Chite Hari, Nabe Hari, Iha Hari, Uha Hari, Jimmy Hari, Jama Hari, Guru Gobind Singh Ji talks about. God is the Pani, God is the land, God is the sky, God is the cave. Which God are you looking for? Tera God hai kithe? What are you looking for? Kadi apne apnu puchya? Have you ever asked yourself, which God am I looking for? So, God is not the problem. God is not the problem. I am is the problem. Me, home, me. Home, dira groga hai. So, what's the solution? Darubi is my. Home is the problem. But the solution is you have to know what Homme is. Most of us don't know what Homme is. We think Homme means Hankar. Hankari ni bani da Don't be somebody with too much pride. Don't be egotistical. Say, I'm not very egotistical. Chalo tika, then you don't have any Homme. We think Homme means don't see yourself as higher than everyone. But Homme doesn't mean don't see yourself higher as anyone. Homme means don't see yourself. Full stop. We have to understand that this is the problem. But where do we get this wisdom from? This wisdom comes from Guru. This wisdom comes from starting from Ik. This is why when we started the Nanak Nam charity, the first thing we said is, you've got to start with Mool Mantra. You've got to start teaching from the basic, right from the beginning. What is Ik? Hale me onkar di gal kiti, sirf Ik di katha ho the. I'm only talking about the meaning of Ik. And what I'm saying is not even a fraction of the Gyan that Guru has. Do we all agree that Ik onkar is the f- ultimate statement? The main concept of Guru Granth Sahib Ji is Ikonkar. Mandiana. That's the main thing we agree. The rest of Guru Granth Sahib Ji is an explanation of Ikonkar. It's trying to get you to understand ke Ikonkar that ki matlab hai. How do you find it? What is the meaning of it? What are the obstacles to it? And every day you read a Hukam Nama, it's always talking about Ik. Every time you read Gurbani, you have to understand that the message is Ik. The message is Ikonkar. Then you start reading Gurbani. Then you start trying to interpret Gurbani. Then you have to start translating Gurbani. Ik to shuru handi You have to know what the meaning of Ik is. When you know what the meaning of Ik is, then Gurbani starts to make sense. But what do we do? Ikonkar, Satnam, Kartapur, Nirpa, Nirvaya, Kalmut, Junisya, 
Where's the concept of ikunkar? It's gone, right? We're already thinking about Bhavan Guru Pani Pita. We're thinking about the end of it already because we, we do, we do Naam Simran like this, checking our clocks. Because we have busy lives, don't we? We don't have time to do all this. I'm not trying to guilt trip you into anything. That's not my style. I'm not interested in making you feel inferior in any way. You're the Sangat, you're the Roop of God. So, whatever tiny bit of help that we can give each other, this is the purpose of Sangat, that we all help each other. We all try and get each other to understand our different ideas of what the meaning of Gurbani is. Then when we get together, you say, what do you mean by God? Oh, I mean this. What do you mean? I mean this. And we work together. That's why the Khalsa is the Guru. The Panth is the Guru. Because collectively, individually we're not the Guru. But collectively, we have the wisdom of the Guru. We have the power of the Guru. Guru has given us Gurgaddi to us. We are now the ones going to carry this message forward. But if we don't understand the meaning of it, we call Guru Granth Sahib Ji Jagat Guru, the teacher of the whole world. But Jaisanu Aapne Pata, how are we going to teach the rest of the world? What are we going to teach them? What does your religion teach you? Oh, there is one God. Oh, that sounds like my religion. Oh, chalo, theek hai fir. That's what we say. And we say all the religions believe the same thing. Christianity, they believe in one God. Islam, they believe in one God. Even in Hindu Taram, they have the Tikrod Devte, but they believe in one superior Brahman, the ultimate God. And you say, yeah, yeah, we also say Ikonkar. So we all thinking that our, all of our gods are just the same over there. You call him God, you call him Allah, you call him something else. I call him Waiguru, but he's there. So we're taking everybody else's description of God and we're saying, huh, huh, yeah, yeah, we're, we believe in that God as well. We're not taking Guru's description of God. We're taking everybody else's description of God. And if we do that, we haven't even begun to read what Guru Sahib is saying. First step is, let's just understand what it is. Then only we can see how do we get to God. How do we actually manifest this thing? So we have to understand that I am is the problem. I am is the problem. So spend more time trying to understand yourself. And just for a moment try to understand what the problem is. Spend some time at the end of the day. You know we do Kirtan Sohela. Fantastic. Then before you go to sleep, spend a few minutes, sit with yourself. Think to yourself, how many times did I think I am today? Then tomorrow you do the Ardas in the morning, you say, Bhai Guru, please bless me that I can't do, say this word I am. Now people get confused, they say, but how do I have a conversation with anyone? You know, even to come here, sometimes if you're driving, you might need to stop and ask for directions. And you say, I'm trying to find the airport. You know, simple statements, I'm hungry, can you give me a sandwich? Simple statements like that, people get confused. They say, I don't know how to have a conversation if I can't say I am. The problem isn't the word I am. You can say I am hungry. What you mean is this body needs some food. But the idea that you think that you are, just always remember the wave. When you say I am, it's the wave forgetting that he's the ocean. And all the religious people in, all the religious waves are saying, I'm trying to find the ocean. And the atheist waves are saying, I don't believe in the ocean. And the people of the different faiths, all those waves are saying, you can't find the ocean because you call it ocean. The real word is the sea. And unless you call it the sea, you can't find it. Somebody says, that's not called the sea, it's called Sagar. This is what we do. Oh, I know why you're not finding God. Because you don't call it Vaiguru. You're not doing Vaiguru Mantar. You're doing something else. So, all of these things have been given to us. Vaiguru Mantar, Naam, all of these things have been given to us. But the first lesson is, let's just understand 
where we're looking. Let's just understand which direction we need to look. And the only simple thing that I can leave you with today is the idea, I am is the problem. Why Guruji ka khalsa? Why Guruji ki fateh?